This video demonstrates the Bondo method for installing a Quran Edge stainless steel sink seamlessly into a custom laminate countertop. This method is the preferred method of installation for all laminate finishes. Before you begin installation, thoroughly check the sink for any signs of damage or defects. Check both the rim of the sink as well as the bowls. Locate where the sink needs to be positioned on the back side of the particle board substrate. Mark the sink center line. Then mark a second line two to two and a half inches back from the front edge of the countertop. Place the sink onto the particle board substrate in the marked position. Use a pencil to trace around the sink. Hold the pencil vertically as you trace around the sink to offset the cutout line approximately an eighth of an inch. Remove the sink. Make a pilot hole. Then use a jigsaw to make the cutout. Cut on the line. When doing multiple sinks of the same design, make a template and use a router to save time. After the cutout has been made, place the sink into the hole to check for fit. A minimum gap of approximately an eighth of an inch should be visible. Remove the sink. Position the laminate on what would be the top side of the countertop. Be sure to account for your overhangs on the perimeter of the countertop. Trace the sink cutout hole onto the back of the laminate, then remove the laminate. Attach wood support strips with screws or glue and staples to the underside of the particle board. Make sure they overhang the sink cutout opening by about three quarters of an inch. Attach the front edge buildup at this time. Do not place wood strips where they may interfere with faucet hole placement. Flip the countertop over. Place the sink into the cutout opening. Use a square to check rim height. The sink rim should sit proud at the top of the surface of the substrate by about 1 32nd of an inch about the thickness of a piece of laminate. If needed, use laminate strips to adjust height. An alternative is to place screws through the underside of the wood support strips. A screwdriver will be used to precisely adjust the height of the sink. Place the sink into the cutout hole, letting it rest on the undermount support strips. Make sure it is centered in the cutout hole then adjust height as needed using a screwdriver. Mix Bondo or equivalent filler product. Squeeze the Bondo into the gap between the sink and the substrate and leave to harden about 10 to 15 minutes. Use a belt sander with a coarse grit sandpaper, 40 to 50 grit works best. And sand the rim of the sink and the bondo until the sink rim, bondo and substrate are completely flush and level. Check with a straight edge as you sand to ensure that you don't produce any dips in the sink or substrate. Drawing pencil lines perpendicular to the sink wall can provide a good visual guide during the sanding process. 
After sanding, clean the sink and the countertop with compressed air. Use the sink cutout to cover the marked area on the back of the laminate. Apply contact adhesive to the back of the laminate. Clean the back of the laminate where the sink will attach with a denatured alcohol and a clean white rag. Use the sink cutout to cover the sink. Apply contact adhesive to the particle board substrate. Clean the sink rim with a denatured alcohol and a clean white rag. Use dowels to position the laminate over the particle board substrate. Prepare a solid surface seam adhesive cartridge. A dark brown colored adhesive is recommended. Apply one continuous bead around the rim of the sink about one eighth of an inch back from the inner front edge. The bead should be about one quarter to three eighths inch in thickness. Attach the laminate to the particle board. After attaching, roll the laminate as normal using a J roller then over the area of the sink, place one or two sheets of particle board to provide pressure while the adhesive cures. Allow adhesive to cure completely approximately 30 to 40 minutes depending on brand of adhesive and the climate. Make a hole in the laminate. Initial trimming of the laminate will be done using a 10 degree bevel bit with an oversized bearing available from Koran or your Koran distributor. Insert the bit securely into a plunge router that can be accurately adjusted for height. Set the bearing of the bit a little below the surface of the laminate and make a pass around the sink. Inspect how much laminate overhang remains. Additional trimming is likely needed. Adjust the router bit slightly lower then make another pass around the sink. Again, inspect how much laminate overhang remains. Check all around the sink to find where the router bit has cut the closest. The goal is to keep adjusting the router bit lower until the router bit is cutting as close to the steel wall as possible without touching the wall. Once this has been achieved, begin filing. Filing should be accomplished using both flat and half round files. File at the same angle all the way around the sink. File until laminate is flush with the sink wall and all the adhesive has peeled off. If needed, hand sand using sandpaper. About a 150 to 180 grit sandpaper works well. Always sand with the grain. This final sanding will smooth the edge of the laminate where it meets the sink wall. If needed, use a flap wheel in a drill to blend the finish. Always follow the grain of the stainless steel when doing any kind of refinishing. You may also do this by hand with a Scotch-Brite pad. If faucet hole placement is known, drill holes using a one and a half inch hole saw and insert faucet hole seal rings with a little silicone. If not known, Make sure you ship them with the top to the job site. Your countertop with seamless Koran Edge Sink is now complete.